there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and right now I am actually at San Diego Comic Con 2024, where they are showing us some brand new exclusive Lego sets for the first time in person. And today, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the brand new Dungeons and Dragons collectible minifigures, investigating the side arm printing, leg printing, all the new molds and details on the figures. So let's get hands on right now. So this is the brand new LEGO Dungeons & Dragons minifigure series, set number 71047. Now, I am particularly excited about these because, for one, I've always loved LEGO Castle, and I feel like this is kind of like the missing LEGO Castle CMF series we never got, and two, they provide us with a ton of unique characters, races, objects, and weapons, and a host of brand new molds to get excited for with this series. Now, obviously, I'm at San Diego Comic Con, so I actually got to see these in person. I wasn't sent these for review, so this is actually my very first time seeing these physically, and words cannot describe how excited I am for this series. We're gonna start off with actually the Lady of Pain here, which just kind of going through the order of the minifigures that they had. This is a really interestingly done figure. It's not immediately obvious to me if the face is a specialized mold or if it's actually a thing that goes over a minifigure head. I think it is a mold just kind of based on what I could see, but it's a really ornate sculpt. You can see all of those prongs sticking out of the side of the face. You have some really great detailing, as well as a new printed one by one tile showcasing some sort of magical artifact. That cape is super nice too. It reminds me of the Calendar Man cape from the Lego Batman movie, but just a lot more intricate in the way that it's cut. It feels a lot more wide towards the bottom, which is super interesting. No arm printing, unfortunately, for this figure, but it is a really nice dark orange color, which is a pretty rare color for a figure. And let's check out the next one. Now, the next figure here might be my favorite minifigure in the entire series. This is the Dragonborn Paladin, and this has arm printing, leg printing, a brand new mold for the armor, a brand new mold for the crystal staff, and a recolored version of the dragon headpiece, which we first saw in a lot of like Lego video sets and CMFs and the other D&D set, and I'm glad they're continuing to give us new colors. What's really exciting to me about this minifigure is that it's actually utilizing a bit of almost element bashing, where they've taken the armor for Cole from Master of the Mountain, which pretty much was just on one side of his arm from Ninja put it on both sides of the arms, and then they've taken the standard minifigure breastplate and just modified it ever so slightly to have some frills near the bottom. These frills also continue down the edges of the Master of the Mountain style kind of side armor elements, which also is a new addition, but they've kind of mashed up all of these existing Lego pieces into a brand new piece. If that piece ever appears on Pick a Brick, I am literally going to buy hundreds of them to outfit my warriors in. I hope that they include it in different colors and put it in more minifigures if we get more D&D stuff because that is a phenomenal armor piece and it would be a shame to only ever get this one for the collectible minifig series. The staff, on the other hand, is quite interesting to me. It almost looks like a Legends of Chima Chi crystal, except it has a little bit more prongs on the sides. It's not super asymmetrical. It actually seems like it's perfectly symmetrical, and it's molded in this really nice opalescent satin transparent clear color, which is super, super cool. I just love the amount of detail factored into this figure, the golden skin on the dragon, the new shield. It just is easily my favorite figure in the series, but there's still a lot of really great Great figures to take a look at. Moving on from there, we actually have our next figure up on this list. This is the Elf Bard. The Elf Bard is one of the more simple figures that we actually get for this particular series. It does have a brand new hairstyle with the ears printed as well as the hair in white, and also is reusing the Lego Movie 2 Wild Style scarf as well as the Lego Monkey Kid Macaque scarf, recolored in a bright pink for the first time. To be honest, the rest of the figure isn't super interesting to me. I think it's a fine medieval torso, but honestly, compared to some of the other crazier figures on the list, 
it's not necessarily the most fascinating. I do like the recolor for the loot though, in a brand new print for a more medieval color scheme, and he does have printed legs as well, which is super cool, and it's very interesting to see this. One thing I do want to note is that many minifigures in this series actually come with alternate headpieces where you can have a male or female version of the character, which I think is a really nice touch because it's always good to get more variations of characters in LEGO sets. Unfortunately, here at San Diego Comic-Con, they really only have one version of the characters on display, but you can find images online showcasing what some of the other variations do look like. Moving on from that, we have the Dwarf Barbarian. Now this one is one that kind of took me by surprise, because by initial images, I honestly wasn't that excited for it. I thought it was okay, but upon seeing it in person, I'm a lot more excited. It has dual molded arms with printing on the sides of the arms, and a brand new piece used for the axe head there. Looks like that actually attaches to a 4L bar, which is super cool, getting that new axe piece in gunmetal. Again, a really massable army piece. Unfortunately, no printing on the mid legs, and we do know LEGO can print on mid legs because we've gotten printing on mid legs for LEGO Harry Potter, we've also gotten it for LEGO Monkey Kids, so I think it is a little bit unfortunate. For me, I feel like a collectible minifigure, especially one that you're paying $5 per figure for, should really have at least leg printing, like at a bare minimum leg printing, but you know, unfortunately this one is just plain. However, it does include gunmetal gray mid legs, which I don't believe we've actually ever gotten before. So I guess they've traded some printing with the ability to actually reuse this outside of its, its intended purpose. So I'm not too broken up about it. It'll be good to amass this and be able to use the pieces for other stuff. I just feel like it could have been maybe a little bit more detailed. But moving on from that, let's take a look at our next figure. Now this is a pretty iconic one, obviously made even more iconic by Stranger Things, but this is the Mind Flayer. The Mind Flayer does come with a really nice brain on legs accessory, almost looks like something out of Doom Patrol, but I really like this one because it has a Cthulhu-like headpiece, which is super menacing. It's almost pretty creepy, honestly, as a Lego minifigure, it's actually quite scary. It's got the printing on the side of the arms, simple black robes, but there is printing on the back of the robe piece and I just love that brand new mold for the brain that is so funny to see and absolutely a great accessory for something like this. This I can obviously tell is going to be one of the most popular minifigures from the series not just because of the pop culture popularity but because it is one of the most interesting new ones featuring not just those dual molded arms with two brand new molds which is pretty cool to get for something like this. But now we can move on to the next villainous minifigure on the list, and this is another one that I absolutely love. This one's Saztam, and he actually comes with two different heads. Honestly, my favorite piece in this whole minifigure might be the new recolor of a transparent red Lego skull. Otherwise, the skull print has been left pretty much exactly the same as the regular skulls, so I just think it's a really funny recolor. But obviously, the rest of the figure is pretty cool as well. You have these ornate red robes, which I'm sure are going to be great for some other minifigure customs. You can see a ribcage printed on the skeleton, and while the head isn't necessarily the most exciting, I feel like maybe a new mold or something more specialized could have been cool for it, I still think it is a really menacing figure and definitely one of the highlights from this particular wave. No arm printing though, which is a bit unfortunate, but now we can move on to the next figure. Now the next one here is actually a specific character. This is Strad von Zarovic. He is actually a vampire-like character and they really went all out on this figure. He has arm printing on the sides of the arms as well as dual molded legs, one of those specialized newer style of sword elements which is super cool and I really love the arm printing here featuring some silver armor on the sides which if you actually google images of the character's quote unquote real life form, he actually does have that silver armor so Lego really paid a lot of attention to detail there. The headpiece is fantastic, I love that facial expression, and the blue cape is also really cool. So overall, a very solid minifigure, and I think my favorite accessory to come with him is definitely gotta be that recolor for the Lego Harry Potter rat with red eyes. That is a very funny recolor, and I'm very glad that we actually got a little recolored animal like that featured inside the actual CMF series itself. 
And moving on from that, is it 2024 or 2014? Because I'm seeing a LEGO Legends of Chima figure. This is technically the Arakakura Ranger, which is this eagle-like character, but it really does look like it's straight out of Legends of Chima if they had, like, the budget that modern themes do nowadays. It's a really interesting one. They're using the Digitigrade Fawn Legs for the eagle here, which I think are actually a really good choice for something like this. It just totally works with the printing and the claws and everything. You have a brand new mold intro introduced for both the head and the wings, and I'm sure those wings are going to be super useful. Would love to see them on like a comic accurate Lego Falcon from Marvel or something like that. And it's also using a new recolor for the Hawkeye bow in this kind of lighter tan color, which is super cool. Overall, definitely another one of the highlights, and it even comes with a little dog to boot. Moving upwards the row here, we have the Gith Warlock, and this one's pretty interesting because he actually is using the standard LEGO minifigure yellow skin, which obviously is meant to represent the skin tone of the Gith, but here I feel like it could totally just work by using that hairpiece for a regular LEGO minifigure style of elf or something like that, so it totally works. It's a brand new hairpiece with the elf ears colored out in yellow, which is quite nice, and I think one of my favorite details here is, first of all, a brand new mold for a knife in gunmetal gray. It's actually a really cool knife because the last time we got a sword or knife or blade that was kind of this length and as a new Lego piece was with the Lego Ninjago Hunted 2019 weapon add-on pack, which we still see in use today. Just got a gunmetal gray recolor in Lego Monkey Kid a couple years back, but this one is even more ornate and curved. You can see the curvature of the knife. It's a really interesting shaping of the mold, so... I am really happy with that piece, and again, really hope it'll appear outside of just this collectible minifigure series. The other really fun thing is seeing the Bionicle quote-unquote voodoo eyeball there, and that is, of course, as a literal eye printed on the Bionicle voodoo ball joint. This is not the first time we have gotten an eye printed there. Of course, Lego Mixels famously printed eyes, but this is a brand new print for the eye on this piece, and I think it makes for a crazy looking staff. The color scheme on this in the reddish brown and dark blue is also really solid. I love the dual molded boots. You have a really great color distribution and color blocking on this minifigure as well because you've got the brown spiky armor, which isn't new, but is a really good one to get. And then it kind of breaks up the solid dark reds and blues of the torso. And overall, just a really nicely designed minifigure and definitely one of the best when it comes to the color blocking out of all of the figures here. Next up, though, we have the Halfling Druid. This introduces a brand new dual molded element showcasing the antlers sticking out of the side of a hood, which is a really cool one to get. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but it's another one I'd love to see used in other LEGO fantasy inspired settings. Give us a ton of different recolors of this piece. And he also is utilizing what looks to be the same or very similar cut of cloth of cape as to the Mateo Dreams minifigure, but this one is obviously meant to look like a leaf dual molded short legs which is appropriate because we rarely if ever get any printing on short legs whatsoever so i think the dual molding makes sense and again a really solid color scheme the staff isn't anything super special but i actually really like the way it's been brick built you've got the leaves on the side and a flower on the top and you do have a new recolor for the lego bird element which is a very very cute recolor definitely one of my favorite recolors to get for this Moving on from that, though, we can take a look at the second-to-last figure, and that is Tasha the Witch Queen. This is another specific character in D&D lore, and they have arm printing on the side of the arms, dual molding on the legs there, and a really great recolor of the witch hat and hairpiece, which actually, if you don't know the story behind this, they literally created this mold for LEGO Video. But of course, when LEGO Video was cancelled, they basically had to scrap a lot of the molds they made for it. Thankfully, the witch hat and hair was ubiquitous enough they were able to utilize it in the LEGO Disney Hocus Pocus set, as well as several other minifigures until it's made its final appearance here so far, where you have it in a really nice dark gray and this dark brown hairpiece color, dark orange hair color, which is super cool. Great color combination and feels the most quote unquote realistic of all the color combinations we've gotten so far. Overall, the detail on this minifigure is phenomenal. I'm super curious how the flames in the firework is that a new piece or is that just the regular Lego fire piece they kind of just stuck in there, the kind of angled fire? Couldn't really tell from the angle that I'm looking at right now, but I'll go back tomorrow and get a closer look at that. And of course, she does have a spell book as well, which I'm sure features an exclusive 1x2 tile on the inside too. And finally, we just have one last character here, 
And this is the Tiefling Sorcerer. This one introduces a specialized head mold with the horns actually molded into the head, as well as a brand new mold for a baby dragon. If I had a nickel for every time LEGO released a new baby dragon mold this year, I would have three nickels, which isn't a lot, but very strange they have made three separate new baby dragon molds this year. One for Norbert in Harry Potter, one for Ninjago Dragons Rising as a Source Dragon Spirit, and now for this. However, I do actually really like that they did a new mold for this because it is completely distinct from the other ones, which are more in-flight dragons. This one's actually kind of curled up and feels like it totally makes sense perched, and I love the color used for it too. That classic red for the dragon totally works. They're also recoloring the Lego Avatar tailpiece in orange there, which is quite good. Dual molded legs and printing on the side of the arms, and they're using this really nice, really interesting brand new mold to showcase some sort of spell being cast with three prongs shooting out of it. It's a really specialized piece, but one that totally works super well for a magic spell being cast, so I'm a big fan of that piece, and when that first was kind of shown online, that was one of the pieces I was most excited about because it just felt like it was one of the most unique types of LEGO pieces they've ever done. Overall, that sums up our in-depth look at the LEGO Dungeons & Dragons collectible minifigure series. Super cool that these are actually available at San Diego Comic-Con, which is unreal to have walked into the booth and seen them in person. I cannot wait to get my hands on these. You know I will be lining up day one the moment these release. I will buy an entire box if I'm allowed to. Now, I know I'm not because my local LEGO store actually caps people to four CMFs total, but you know... I'll be finding some people that maybe I can pay them to get extras because I love these figures, and it's one of the one series that I would not mind getting duplicates of pretty much any one of the figures here, and actively will be looking to get many duplicates of quite a few of them, especially that amazing Dragonborn soldier there. That's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed our early look at this new collectible minifigure series. Thanks so much for tuning into Duck Bricks, and be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon. Bye for now.